both parties are corrupt as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I expect the Democrats to be a bunch of godless communists. I, I would kind of hope our party would steer away from that. Patriots, this is Kelly Jackson of the Tennessee Conservative, Tennessee's number one conservative news alternative. Today, I am absolutely 100% blessed to have with me uh, Congressman Tim Burchett from Tennessee's second congressional district out there in Knoxville. Thank you so much for being with me today, Congressman Burchett. How are you doing? I'm great. It's just Burchett. I'm not Virgin. when you get okay. Yes, ma'am. When, when Tony Dorsett won the Heisman, he became Tony Dorsett, and I have not won the Heisman. <laughs> so it's just Burchett. Okay, Congressman Burchett, thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. So today, I wanted to ask you a few questions about a few things, and I'm going to start with the topic of energy. And you recently questioned uh, Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm on you know, what her department is doing in terms of different forms of energy. And I thought you know there were a couple of items in that conversation that were worth digging into a little deeper, especially since she had to be hauled before the committee versus just showing up voluntarily. Um, a little backstory first though, um, we've been here since 2016 and we were happy to be here because the energy prices here in Tennessee compared to where we were living out West are just much more affordable and um, which we were blessed, blessed to have have to to have that. Um, what we did notice though, about 2021, 2020, 2021, um, the TVA seemed to be consistently underesting, underestimating the power demand that we have needed. And, and we have had more power outages in the last three years than in all of the years we've been here combined. Um, the freeze for two days before Christmas was a special treat for us because I had a house full of family and the only thing keeping us warm for two days was my gas stove. Yes, so... With all that said, you asked uh, Secretary Granholm about more reactors, and she indicated that we're getting closer. Um, for those that don't know, we do have the four power plants, Sequoia 1 and 2 and Watts Bar 1 and 2. You indicated that Tennessee is a nuclear powerhouse, so and I think it supplies about 45% of the electricity in our state. It just seems as time passes, the federal government is pushing Americans closer and closer to a lifestyle that they can just shut down with the flip of a switch. So what is being done at the congressional level to mitigate this push for control over our energy? Well, unfortunately, not a whole lot. Um, both parties are corrupt as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I expect the Democrats to be a bunch of godless communists. I, I would kind of hope our party would steer away from that. but. We, uh, you know, uh, the K Street lobbyists and the war pimps at the Pentagon and otherwise have a lot of control over us. You know, we, we've talked, I can remember about eight years ago, they said, you know, in about eight years, we're going to have these small modular reactors. Mm -hmm. And that would provide a lot more um, energy safer, uh, not so much centralized. And here it is eight years later. And they're saying, you know, about eight to 10 more years, we're going to get those dead gum things. <laughs> and, uh, and so it's just, it's just crazy. The amount of regulation, I understand it needs to be safe, but you have bureaucrats that just bureaucrats on top of bureaucrats and it's just ridiculous. And we are, um, uh, I think people are getting frustrated with it as they should. You know, we've, uh, this administration has put people on the TVA board that are pushing us away from carbon-based fuels or that's in the ground. I think, I think God put them there for, and for us to use and that gun, we ought to use them. Um, natural gas, um, oil, things like that, coal, um, it, it are not according to our, our colleges and higher learning institutions, but, but according to real science, our air is a lot more cleaner than it was in the seventies. Um, I always give the, story about driving by um, Robert Shaw every, every Sunday morning, going to church with my mom and dad and our VW Beetle, no seat belts. Dad was probably smoking his pipe. And, <laughs> uh, and we'd, when we'd have to roll the windows up because they were making plexiglass, and it would literally make your eyes burn and your nose run. 
<laughs> and, you know, if, if they were doing that today, they, sh they would go to jail and they should. But we're, our, our air is cleaner, our water is cleaner, and we are in so much better shape. But uh, fast forward to now, um, we have people on the board that are just, you know, if they're not compromised by our enemies, they are they they sure act like they are because they're pushing us further and further away from getting what we have in the ground, what we have here, and purchasing it from our enemies. And throw in a bunch of gutless politicians who are in in bed literally or figuratively with uh with lobbyists. And you have the environmental community, which I feel like in some instances has been infiltrated. If you remember during the Clinton administration, the Obama administration, and probably during the, some of the Bush administration areas would get, um, we'd say, oh, there's a huge coal reserve there. Then all of a sudden they would turn it into a national park. Um, mm -hmm. Those types of things would happen and our national media would just kind of brush over it because they're in bed with those folks. They helped them get there. They are part of the, their leadership is part of the deep state. And, and so we are, and here we, here we are, we're using, and we, we're needing energy, coldest day of the year. Um, we pay the head man at TBA over eight million dollars a year plus bonuses. Yep. Um, remember, President Trump told me in the in the White House, he said, "Tim, you do that job for eight million dollars a year, wouldn't you, buddy?" And I said, <laughs> "Yes, sir, Mr. President. <laughs> One year." And then I said, "No, you better make that two. You don't know my wife and daughter." And he laughed. <laughs> and the whole room erupted. But but the truth was, he he got it, and yeah. he not just said TBA and. These other organizations, I, I'm a big fan of privatization. It, it yeah. scares people, yeah. but I, I think we need to start moving towards those models. We are capitalists in this country, and yeah, there's there's going to be some government oversight, but I think I think we'd be better served now, especially with the nuclear energy coming on, um, to get away from this model we have of, of you know we've got a we've, we've got a, a federal organization like TVA that will remind us. They remind us quite often that they are a, um, a, you know, they are not, they're a quasi-governmental entity until they need government assistance, just yep. like the post office. And then what do we do? We yep. write them a big fat check yep. and then and then they tell us to go mind their own business. And there's a real arrogance on TVA's part, whether they're coming on your land, yep. spraying unnecessarily, um, or just any of this other, or the responses they're giving, you know, they go into executive session, so we can't cover it under sunshine type situations. So, um, you know, I've had a running battle with TBA. It's no secret. I, I'm not a fan of, of their leadership model. I think you could pay somebody a million dollars a year and, uh, and they would gladly run TBA. Yes. Yes. That was, first of all, that was an amazing um, uh, impression of President Trump. That was fantastic um Thank you. but I'm proud I, of that. Yeah. <laughs> um but yes i absolutely agree in fact i think it wasn't until that freeze a couple of years ago that i looked into you know who the tva is what their makeup is and then noticed i think it was six members of that board were replaced when the biden administration came in <laughs> so um, do you think that there would be maybe possibly an effort to privatize that if if President Trump is reelected in the fall? I think there could be, but nobody really has the guts to pull the trigger. Let's be honest. I see I can in recent mem mem memory, I can remember some Tennessee senators uh, who were who talked about that on the campaign trail. But once they got in, you know, it's sort of like term limits. Yes. Everybody's formed until they get elected, and then they think, hey, we need to study this for a few years. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And the big boys whisper in their ear. They don't want it. They want their their cheap energy, which is which is subsidized. It's not cheap. It costs somebody something. Yes, sir. And, um, and they want to continue on this path of, of them being the kingmakers and things like that. Um, what you'd have to do is you'd have to have a succession of presidents who mm -hmm. believe in privatization and would put people on that board that would um that would agree to that. Yeah. So I and until they do that, um, I don't see it happening. Um, but the president can remove board members as okay. he did while I was sitting there with him. Wow. And the vice president, it was kind of history making. I was wow. I was surprised none of the other Tennessee legislators showed up I, because Tennessee because TBA has a yes. They'll tell you they don't have lobbyists, but they've got oh, yeah. people in the community that 
Mm -hmm. that just, um, you know, that, that, that bow and scrape to the chamber of commerce oh, and, yes. and that will call you to the woodshed and they don't want that call. Yeah. Yes, sir. No, I, I am eyeball deep in grassroots here in middle Tennessee. And yes, I concur with that assessment a thousand percent. So the, the chamber of commerce is the head of the snake in my opinion. Yeah. Well, you remember the national chamber of commerce, um, endorsed, I believe 14 or so of Nancy Pelosi's lieutenants mm -hmm. over Republicans or conservatives or moderates even. Yeah. And, um, and then, you know, that's why we really have no, um, border control. Yeah. It's, it's because the Chamber of Commerce wants somebody on your roof that doesn't speak English when they fall off is not going to sue them because they're afraid of being deported. And they'll just be sent to the emergency room where us peasant taxpayers pick up that tab for that person yep. by higher by higher fees. The millionaires, you know, it's not good. Yep. pennies Absolutely. on the dollar for them. But it's but for us, it's a bad thing. And we've got to get now. Call, I've been calling them out regularly, as you, you well know, but yes. it's um, I'm. But that's few and far between yeah. with other yeah. members of Congress. Yeah. And I really just don't care. Let them come. They've been coming after me my whole political life, ma'am. And yes, I'm sir. I'm telling you, we've got, you know, we have people that we've, we've got a, a good one over here in, in Blunt County. Um, and they brought in Smith and Wesson and some others. But yeah. some of these folks, you know, they're not from your area. Yeah. And they've got this education and there's an arrogance. The Bible talks about professing yourself to be wise, you became a fool. Yes. And that's sort of what we're at right now. Yes, I agree. hundred percent. So also in that conversation with uh, Secretary Granholm, you mentioned the UAPs present at the reactor sites and she yeah. seemed to try to push that off. Like it's some kind of conspiracy theory, you know, but there, there is discussion out there that these UAPs are powered by a source of energy that the government has access to, but won't release as open source. Um, what yeah. are your thoughts on that? If you have any. Well, I've got a lot of thoughts on that. <laughs> and they, they tried to use it against me a lot. Um, yes. You know, we've got a Pentagon that has never passed an audit mm -hmm. and, and we reward them with 20 to 40 billion new dollars every time they turn around. Yes. And there's a real arrogance there. And you see people in both parties invested heavily in missile defense systems that we just happen to be exporting to Ukraine right now. Mm -hmm. And so where does that leave us? All I want is transparency. Yes. I just want somebody to come out and say, hey, we've got this is going on um, and tell us what's going on. It's our tax dollars. We should know. It's not about little bit. I mean, ultimately, it is, you know, about flying saucers and what have in the inhabitants right. of those. But. We have a right to know. And when I sit in a meeting with a pilot, one of the best in the world that tells me, Tim, mm -hmm. this thing was 14 feet from my cockpit. And then I have some little punk in a man bun, mm -hmm. uh, 30 years old, telling me, laughing at me in a in a, in a classified briefing, saying that I don't that, that I don't know what I'm talking about. And then when I, when when he's asked, well, what about the um, what about the data collected yeah. from the planes that you're sitting here telling us didn't exist? Right. And he said. Oh, I haven't seen that data. You know, it, this is what we're at. And 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 then they and then they send these clowns after me on election day, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, Burchett, he's, you know, what's next, Burchett? You know, and, and here's the model they want for all that. Believe it or not, it is the same model that for the Kennedy assassination files. Ma'am, that happened over 60 years ago. And yeah. and and we know about as much as we know from that yes. day. Yes. And they will not release anything. And mm -hmm. they, they say they don't exist, yet they release files that have been heavily redacted. It looks like somebody shot them with a 12-gauge shotgun. Yes. And I, I'm I'm not turning loose of it. And there's more members, more and more members. I mean, it's it's across the aisle. AOC. Yeah. Um, she's she's with with me on the disclosure. And um Jared Moskowitz out of Florida. Yeah. Um, you know, so we've got it's a lot going on with that, but uh, it's uh, and you're right. She was just being and and if you saw what happened, yeah. um, my friend on there, uh, Anna Polina Luna, who's yeah. she's pretty smart. Um, yeah, I, I actually set her set the the commissioner up. Mm -hmm. I asked the I teed her up, and then when she said she didn't know what you're talking about, that didn't exist. And Luna had the we we'd already that was sort of our plan. 
whoever right. got whoever called on first and then whoever got on second delivered yeah. the blow. And she did. And people were saying, well, you should ask questions like Lona did. What are you doing? And I was like, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, this is I'm playing chess with these clowns. This checkers is over. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. And she 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 was very arrogant. And mm -hmm. she didn't know it either. Either I said, I tweeted that day. I think she, I said, she's either very arrogant or lying. And I think it's a combination of the two. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And we've, we've had documented cases where the facil nuclear facilities had literally just shut down. Wow. And, um, and so. Um, so does that, yeah. the presence of these things, it causes that to happen? Is that what happened? I, I don't know. I don't know. And we're not, they're not wreck it, crashing like they did. Um, partly because we use a different type, I think it's because we use a different type of sonar. Okay. And, um, and I think that's why you see after the forties, you saw a different, it, it's changed a whole lot. You know, um, Roswell's the one everybody talks about, right. but there was, there was, um, there's been ones, there's one, maybe a little, a, a few before, but there's one afterwards that not really talked about. And there's been other occurrences and, uh, you know, and I, and I'm a Christian. I'm not a, I'm a born again Christian. Jesus died on the cross for my sins. But and, and this doesn't scare me one bit about my religious beliefs. I believe that he, you know, in the beginning, Genesis one, the heavens and the earth, you know, and in Ezekiel, if you read the first chapter of Ezekiel, that's some pretty odd stuff for them to talk about a wheel within a wheel that's flying above them. And, and if it's a, if it's a conspiracy to lie to Tim Burchett, They've they've contacted tens of thousands of people because yeah. I'm I'm telling you, overseas I get I'm on a podcast I could be on a podcast every day I think I just don't have yeah. the time to do it and in yeah. England I'm, it's a big deal and um, yes Central America and um, and every organized religion has something like this and if you go into the um, the pyramids there's hieroglyphics that yeah pretty convincing and, yeah, and um, I that's that was back before Al Gore, Al Gore invented the internet. So, you know, <laughs> people wouldn't be able to talk to each other. Yes, yes. I mean, I, I think the consensus among some of my my people is that uh, it's a combination of um, intrigue in, in that the government has obviously has something that they don't want us to be privy to. And, and when you combine that with what we know we're dealing with spiritual forces uh, all the time so yes, I think it's a, it's a combination of the two and uh these things if people are seeing anything I really believe it's a, a, a spiritual in nature versus um you I, know. I, there's a lot of talk about that inter interdimensional um yeah. and other things but I I wish you and your 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 followers here could could see all the things that I've been privileged to, and I'll just leave yeah. it to, leave it at that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, boy. I, I can tell you, we concur with that. We concur. Let me move on to. Uh, let me flip on over to voter integrity. So I had a question from a good friend of mine who is sort of the champion of voter integrity here in Tennessee. And right. she was wondering about uh, Congressman Roy's SAVE Act. And I was looking at it, and it looks like the only member of our Tennessee delegation uh, that signed on to that is Representative um, Harshbarger. So what about the bill has caused you to, you know, to decide that you weren't going to sign on to it? Are there any amendments that could cause you to reconsider that? Or have you signed on to it? And I just don't have that information well i tell you signing on to something it's just they come to you on the floor and say hey virgin you got to look at this thing there's thousands of bills and i get people all the time say well you didn't sign on the <laughs> you know the yeah slow slow boat to china bill i thought you were for slow boats to china you know yeah. and i i don't, I don't know I'll, I'll talk i uh, since you brought it up I'll, I'll talk to chip he's a good buddy of mine and i'll i'll see about it i i I'm, if it's about uh, voter integrity, I'm sure I won't have any problem with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, essentially, but a lot of those, you know, a, a lot of times though, you got to realize thousands of bills. We yeah. have twenty or thirty yeah. committees, and a lot of times they don't even ask you to sign on unless you're on that committee that would hear yes. it. Okay. So, and I don't yeah. serve on any committees, to Diane, and um, but we're friends. Our districts yeah. butt up each other. Right. So I'll, but I'll be glad to look into it. Yeah, it just, it seems common sense 
obtaining proof of citizenship and then removing non-citizens from the voter roll. Right. So, I mean, as I say, a lot of times when somebody says they have a bill, an idea about uh, something with common sense, I always say, "Ma'am, you have you have no <laughs> no um, you have you should never serve in Congress. We do not honor common sense here." <laughs> yeah. Well, I will say when I reviewed the list. There are a few on there that I'm not a huge fan of. So it does kind of make me go, hmm, you know, when when those characters sign on to something, I sort of am a little bit more suspect of it than a lot of, you gotta realize it's an election year too. People yes, sign sir. on to stuff because yeah. they they know it's not gonna go anywhere. And you know, that guy, they they play that game. Yes. Election year, they run home to our Lincoln Day and Reagan A dinners and yes. throw the red meat out. Nancy Pelosi, she's earning 40%. On her stock market tips, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Well, you got it. One Democrat was making over three hundred percent. Nancy's not even in the. I don't think she's in the top fifty, or maybe yeah. in the top fifty. But you know, as I like to say, my buddy Tommy Siler, he manages my seven thousand dollar portfolio for me. So, <laughs> my mutual fund. Big, big <laughs> <I> have, <laughs> Yes, man. My daughter's gonna have to. I don't know if she better go to a, a get a scholarship to welding school because I don't know if I'm gonna be able. To, <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, the future is in the trade. So, I know. I, well, my degree is technological and build education. I, yeah. I, as a matter of fact, I do it all over again. I'd be a welder. I like to weld and I yeah. can run a shop and things like yeah. that. So, that's, I, yeah, that's I have three teenagers. Uh, I'm, I'm pushing one of them into something more trade oriented just because we need people to fix stuff. We're going to run out yes. of people to fix stuff. And there's always going to be, as I always say, you cannot deport a clogged toilet to Mexico. This is true. <laughs> this is true. So as I mentioned earlier, we have a big election uh, coming our way, uh, obviously, with the presidential election. I can't believe we've actually made it through four years from, you know, Inauguration Day in 2021. Um, thank God the time has seemed to go by Quick, somewhat quickly, but only, I think, because we've all been so preoccupied with trying to conserve what we can conserve. Um, sure. But what do you see for at least the hold on Congress, and what do you think are our chances for retaking the Senate? I think um, we have a good shot at all three, but the problem is, is a lot of yours and my people that we probably even confide in, you know, 20 million so-called evangelical Christians decided to stay home. Yeah. We have got to put enough points on the board, ma'am, so they can't steal this next election. Yes, sir. We um, And and that's what's got to happen. And we've got to play it smart. We didn't play it smart last time. We should have had pre-filed lawsuits ready yes. instead of a bunch of TV personalities running yeah. to the cameras. And we should have been ready for the fight because yeah. it, it, this one's for everything. This is... This is the deep state, the people that control the CIA, the FBI, the IRS, yeah. um, all of these things. And I think Trump, President Trump understands it. At least we had conversations that he is, I believe, you know, said to me that that that, in fact, we need to fix these things. And I, I encouraged him. I said, you know, you're great at um, you're great at, at telling us what's wrong because right. we're seeing it every day. But you're you're better at telling us how to fix these things, and that's what we need. Yeah, we need to fix these things. America is in a free fall, and yeah. frankly, you know, and I get it. Trump's, I mean, yeah, you look at your Bible, King David. Yeah, I mean, King David's kind of a dirt bag. Well, yeah. he was a dirt bag. He slept with Bathsheba, his best friend, <laughs> the general. Yeah. You know, and then you had him killed. Yes, they ran him into battle and then pulled everybody out around him, got him killed. Yeah, but but God had favor upon him yes. and i and i can't tell you why i feel that for some reason god still has favor on this country yes but we've turned our back so many on so many instances and um uh, you know i i'll tell you this I, I i i prayed with president trump one time mm -hmm. um in um in new jersey at his country club there it was me and him and one other congressman in the room. And, you know, security was there, but I yeah. you just get used to that stuff. And I, and I prayed with him. And then after it was over with, he looked at me and said, he says, Tim, is this what this is all about to you? And he, and, you know, he went like this, you know, obviously, you know, what I, what I'm doing, I said, 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. President, it is. Yeah. And I prayed for his safety and his family's safety and yeah. his well-being. And um, I, I felt like, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm in politics. I've been it my whole life, man. It's just a con game, liars convention. But I felt at that point, you know, President Trump, I felt like something was cracking that hard Yankee yeah. exterior. And I, and I would encourage people to pray for President Trump, pray yes, for his God. salvation, pray. Um, and I don't like these pictures that show, you know, him holding hands with Jesus or something, oh, you know, I mean, no. that, that ain't Trump. That's not Trump. No, I mean, no. He's, I don't want him to, I don't want him teaching down here at first Baptist. My Sunday no, school class. That is I'm not why we are Fred, electing you know? him. <laughs> and, and let me give you an, let me, I know we, I don't want to run out of time, but can no, I no, give no, you one fine. quick example? Sure. Okay. You know, we've had leaders in the past in our party, which I'm pointing to, you know, they call the UN to get permission to go to the bathroom, you know. Yeah. Can we use two ply or single ply toilet paper almost? True. But yeah. you remember, remember this remember this guy Soleimani? He was a he was yes. a terrorist. He was a I bad do. guy. Yes. And I talked to people in intelligence that had tracked him for quite some time. And he murdered and tortured and it was just a horrible, despicable yes. human. Yes. Well Trump had him taken out. And yeah. he didn't take him out at the airport. Uh, when he could have got him coming off the um, coming off the plane, he couldn't in a crowd of people. He got him on an interstate, and he he uh, they probably had a spotter on the ground, and yeah. I mean, you know, it was probably some 20, 28 year old second lieutenant in Las Vegas, Nevada, flying a drone. <laughs> but yeah. I, don't, I don't know that for a fact, but I don't right. know that as either, and I'll leave it at that. But right. the way they identified Soleimani was his ring finger. Because really? that was about all that was left. Yes, ma'am. They had this ring on it. It was a specific design. And, yeah. you know, you see his charred remains over there. It could have been him. It could have been anybody, the man on the moon. And then you see his shin bone lean, leaning up against a guardrail, things like that. And um, and and the reason I tell you all this is, is because he didn't check with the United Nations. Right. He didn't call and say, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. He just right. did it. He just did it. And, um. And and that's uh, and one other quick story. I was possibly he was he was having a the most delicious chocolate cake ever down at um, Mar a Largo with um, yeah. Xi Jinping, the head yeah. guy of China. Chinese. He's pretty ruthless. Cat. He's pretty ruthless cat himself. But yes, he but is. Trump was Trump was a cowboy, and he is a cowboy. He doesn't, and he's unpredictable. And I dig that about him. But he um, apparently, you know, here's when. I mean, they come in to tell the president something. They don't just announce it or anything. It's, they don't send it by osmosis. Some staff will walk in and whisper something in his ear. And maybe as the chief of staff, somebody else comes in and they're in there eating. And um, and the guy whispers into his ear. And Trump puts his fork down and looks over at Xi Jinping and says, you know, we just sent, I forget how many, I think it was Syria, maybe 90 cruise missiles over there. Xi Jinping puts his fork down and says, they shouldn't have been gassing kids picks up his fork and they just continue. And that was all that was said. Wow. And that's, that's, that's the kind of leader we need. We don't, yeah. and I don't know if that's accurate or not. I was some pretty informed people told me that, but, um, yeah. but it, I wouldn't put it past him. And that, that's, yeah. that's the kind of that person we need. Yeah. He makes decisions, you know, when he, when he moved the, um, um, uh, embassy in, in Israel. Yes. You get a lot of people mad. Now yeah. it's going to cause World War Three. Nothing happened. Nothing Not a happened. Shot right. And Gaza didn't happen. Okay. Russia didn't move into Ukraine. Mm -hmm. North Korea wasn't shooting up a bunch of crazy missiles. Yeah. Um, you know, just look across the board. And um, and here we are. We're on both sides. We borrow money from China to give yeah. to Taiwan to yeah. protect them against China. Yeah. We. We uh, get no at the beginning of the of the war between Russia and Ukraine. It's horrible. Putin's yeah. a thug. Yeah, I wish he was eliminated. But, but the problem with eliminating somebody like that, you don't know who's behind him. Right. You when you need a battle you know. too for somebody yeah. else. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And so you got you got a lot of things like that going on. And and but Trump understood that, and he he had a good gut, and um, you know so. Yeah. I, I felt like we're we're on the cusp with yeah. this bunch now. This guy can't even find the 
you know, and can't pour water out of a boot unless then even if the instructions are written on the heel. And I've had conversations <laughs> with him. He's it's not, ma'am, it's not it, it's not even a Saturday Night Live skit. It is no. beyond it is beyond belief. And um and so, you know, who's pulling the strings? That's what yeah. you gotta worry about. Yeah, yeah. And I and right so. now he, he he's so incoherent. Yes. That that I'm afraid they're gonna put somebody else in there. Yeah. Like the governor of California or whoever. Yeah. You know, Maybe. so I don't know. I, I tweeted about the other day. I, I thought it would be um the governor of California. And then Roger mm -hmm. Stone got on there and said, no, in fact, he thinks it's gonna be Hillary. I mean, not Hillary, but um Michelle Obama. You and know, so I, yeah. yeah, I've heard um, I've heard a lot of people say that they can't replace him at this point as well. Like Larry Elder, who is a black conservative, he has he says, I pay attention to a lot of the black media and they to replace him with a white man would be such an affront to a huge voter base that they have, which are black women, you know, to yeah. over to to go over to gloss over Kamala Harris would be such an insult to them. They might lose their, them as a voter base. So I hope the Obamas feel like they're just having too much fun out in Hollywood and they don't want to come back to the white house and she decides not to do it. Um, so, yeah. but then, you know, the Democrat convention of what was it? 68 happened. So they have super delegates. So, I mean, who knows? Yeah, it's not a, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. and, and you got to realize it's very Clinton-esque. Yes. Well, they don't, they don't care who they hurt. Yes. Agreed. And they don't care for the pilot. They don't care. They just yes. want to win. It's that vicious power. Yeah. And, and it's our own fault. But then yeah. again, if we put a bunch of moderate Republicans in that just sell us down the river on this debt thing and just yeah. keep playing, um, undermining everything we do all over the world because we don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. Yeah. Yeah. So, Washington DC is, you know, it's called a swamp. Yeah. But a swamp's a pretty cool thing, ma'am. You know, God created a swamp and it's it's uh um you know it's a cool little ecosystem. Yeah. Washington DC Washington DC is just an open sewer. It just flows in and nothing but but contamination and yeah. putrid grossness flows out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, uh, finally, I would be remiss if I did, if I let you go and I didn't ask you about a run for governor in 26. Are there any thoughts on that? I'm sorry, ma'am. We just ran through a tunnel. We're breaking up. <laughs> you know, I get that. I get that a lot. And, um, you know, I've thought about it. I'll pray about it. I just, yes, sir. I, I just say no right now, but I won't put an H in front of that. No, yes. there's a lot of people that want to run for governor. I've, I spent 16 years in the legislature, and honestly, I think I could do a good job. Yes. But uh, um, we, we can talk about it. We can talk about it. I'll, I'll listen to you. Yeah. I don't know what it costs to board a horse in Davidson County. I wonder if I could just let the horses run on the on the grounds of the uh, of the governor's mansion. But I I think I could do a good job. I understand yeah. state government. As I said, the four years in the House, 12 in the Senate. I've got friends in all 95 counties. Yes. Um, but it's a very expensive venture and a lot of people hate my guts that are power brokers. But and, that, um, but that's good and that's, though. Based I know on what good. I know. I know it's good. I know it's good. I've and spent enough time up at Cordell Hall. That's a good thing if they hate your guts. So yes, ma'am. I got you. I've spent a lot of time over there too, as you know. Um, yes. Well, we can talk about it, but thank you. I'm honored that you yeah. would think about it. Oh, I, but my I, ultimate, ultimately it'd be, how that would affect my yes. my beautiful wife and my daughter. Of course. And that's, yeah. that's my number one concern right now. I'm one of yeah. a dear friend of mine, a preacher, Pastor Sexton, who passed away. He'd always tell me, he said, Tim, take care of that family. Nothing more important. And I'd say, yes, Pastor, you're right. And I know he's right. And yeah. so, but that, that, that's my concern. Yeah. A hundred percent. That's where your priorities should definitely be. So, and we're perfectly, we're, we're thrilled where you're at now. And we love the fact that you stand up so boldly for the state of Tennessee and you are 
just a stalwart defender of all of the things in our state about our state that we love. And so many people, I hate, I have to say so many people coming here because they believe in it too. They believe yes, in all of the things that make Tennessee such an amazing state to live in. So I just appreciate you and I appreciate your representation for us up there in that uh, sewer. So yeah, y'all, if y'all want me to run for something, just you need to make sure a lot of these groups call my office and get me out to speak. I don't, I'll travel to speak. I don't mind. We go all over the okay. place. I just, I drive and I'll drive home and we're good. Good to know. Good to know. As long as, those, you, as long as those Ukrainian hit squads don't get me, <laughs> apparently I'm on their list. <laughs> well, we'll make sure to hire extra security. So. <laughs> I carry carry my own security most of the time, ma'am. But thank you. I'll I'll take it. You're well. Yeah. You're you're yeah. very kind. Well, again, thank you so much for being with us today, uh, Congressman Burchett. And this has just been such a great opportunity and time getting to talk with you on behalf of Tennesseans. Please, please come back and see us again anytime. You just call me, ma'am, and I'll be glad to. I love this show, and y'all are great. And it's thank it's, it's, you. It's, got great supporters and yes and we are blessed beyond belief to live in tennessee i can have the best day of my life in washington dc but when they yep. bang that gavel i'm heading to the airport because yep. i'm going to get home you bet you bet absolutely thank you so much congressman and you have an amazing day and we will talk to you again soon thank you so much ma'am it's been my pleasure thank you